Genesis chapter 19. The two angels came to Sodom at evening. <clears throat> Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Lot saw them and rose up to meet them. He bowed himself with his face to the earth, and he said, See now, my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house. Stay all night, wash your feet, and you can rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, but we will stay in the street all night. He urged them greatly, and they came in with him and entered into his house. He made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. Now, this is very similar to what has just happened with Abraham. The three men came to him, and actually they were angels. And we remembered that Paul says that be, be careful to entertain strangers, because some have entertained angels unawares, without knowing it they were entertaining angels. And clearly he's got in mind Abraham and also Lot. It just shows that, in fact, there might be people who we think are just people who, in fact, come into our lives but are either angels or are controlled by angels. So, the angels come into Lot's house and the Sodom surround Lot's house, and they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came into you this night? Bring them out to us. Lot went out to them to the door and shut the door after him. He said, Please, my brothers, don't act so wickedly. See now, I've got two virgin daughters. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them what seems good to you. Only don't do anything bad to these men, because they've come under the shadow of my roof. Well, that doesn't sound very good, really, offering your daughters to this crowd of men. It's rather like Abraham and Isaac lying about their wives. You know, on the other hand, Lot is called in the New Testament a righteous man who was very sad and upset in himself that the people he lived with were so wicked. So you see, on one hand, Lot did the right thing, but on the other hand, like with offering his daughters, he did the wrong thing. So that's just like us. And if we worry, but am I good enough? Well, a lot of these faithful people like Lot, they were good in some ways and bad in other ways. You know, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. But in the end, it's down to our hearts whether we really do love God in our hearts. So, the men who were around the house said, Stand back. Then they said, This one fellow, this is Lot, came in to live as a foreigner. He appoints himself as a judge. Now will we deal worse with you than with them? They pressed hard on the man Lot and drew near in order to break the door down. But the men, that's the angels, reached out their hand and brought Lot into the house to them and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. The men said to Lot, Do you have anybody else here, sons-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whoever you have in the city? Bring them out of the place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown so great before the Lord that Yahweh has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for Yahweh is going to destroy the city. So Lot should never have gone in there in the first place. And when there was that business when Abraham had to go and rescue him, because the city of Sodom had been overcome by these other tribes, well, he should have learnt the lesson and, gone, uh, and not gone back there, but he didn't. But Lot seemed to his sons-in-law to be joking. When the morning came, then the angels hurried Lot, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters that are here, lest you be destroyed in the sin of the city. But he lingered, he dilly-dallied, he delayed. He didn't go straight away. And so the men, that's the angels, grabbed his hand, his wife's hand and his two daughters' hands. Yahweh being merciful to him. And they took him out and set him outside of the city. So when the angel comes and says, he's back, we've got to go straight away. It really will be a case of go straight away. 
And in that split second, when we know Jesus has come back, really who we really are will be revealed. If we love Jesus with all our heart and soul, we will immediately want to go and be with him. If we dilly-dally because we love the things of this life, my new birthday present I want to play with or try out, my new house or kitchen or whatever, then, you see, we won't be ready. It came to pass, when they'd taken them out, that one of them said, Escape for your life, don't look behind you, and don't stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be consumed. Lot said to them, Oh, not so, my lord. You think, Oh, Lot, come on, go. See now, your servant has found favour in your sight, and you've magnified your grace, which you've shown to me in saving my life. But I can't escape to the mountain, lest the evil chase me there, and I die. See now, this city is near to flee to, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Isn't it a little one? And my soul shall live. He said to him, Behold, I have given you your request about this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I can't do anything until you get there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. So you see how weak Lot was. The angel said, get out of here straight away. Oh, no, dilly-dallying. Oh, come on, drags him by the hand. And he says, oh, wait a minute. Now, do I really have to go up into the mountains? Can't I go to Zoar? Then you see how merciful, really, God was to him. Then Yahweh rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from Yahweh out of the sky. He overthrew those cities. What's sulfur? Well, it's a kind of chemical that burns. that burns very hard. He overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And Jesus says, remember Lot's wife. In other words, she looked back thinking, oh, there's my house, there's my new kitchen. Bang, she was turned into a pillar of salt. And Lot had to keep on going. Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he had stood before Yahweh. He looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and looked and saw that the smoke of the land went up as the smoke of a furnace. It happened when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the middle of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Lot went up out of Zoar and lived in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he was afraid to live in Zoar. So in the end, he realises that God was right. He lived in a cave with his two daughters. So, he'd been so wanting what was best, wanting to live in the best land, and now he's brought to spend the rest of his life in a cave. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come into us in the way of all the earth. Come, let's make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve our father's seed. They made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He didn't know when she lay down, nor when she arose. It came to pass on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father, let us make him drink wine again tonight. You go in and lie with him, that we may preserve our father's seed. They made their father drink wine that night also. The younger went and lay with him. He didn't know when she lay down, nor when she got up. Thus both of Lot's daughters were with child by their father. The firstborn bought a son and named him Moab. He's the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ammai. He is the father of the children of Ammon to this day. So Lot doesn't show as particularly a good righteous person getting drunk sleeping with his daughters not wanting to go when he's told but he's called in the new testament that righteous man so it just shows that you don't have to be totally perfect for god to work with you so uh what was their names again moab and Ammon. yeah so were they like friends or something well, I guess they were pretty friendly with each other. Just the weird thing was that their daddy was also their their granddad. No, 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 but now. Moab and Ammon. Well, 
whoever they represent now, yes, they'd be uh, related. 